We've all met a perfectionist in our lives, the one who triple checks, the one who makes an itinerary, the one who spell checks Facebook posts. You might even be one, and you're checking my grammar right now. No judgment. But in this week's episode, we're going to meet a woman whose little imperfections were more than just bothersome to her, but became a source of insecurity and depression that led her down a dark path. Let's get started. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, where we share the gospel of Jesus Christ through the art form of audio drama. Yes, and that includes sound effects. We do this by using true life stories of real people. I'm Timothy Gregory, and I've got a question for you. How do you judge your own worth? By the way people view you? By your actions? By your looks? Well, the Bible says in Psalms 139, 14, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. So, we're supposed to get our worth not from what we do, but from the fact that God made us. Now, that all sounds good and nice, but that's easier said than done. Some days I don't feel very marvelous. So how are we supposed to convince ourselves of this when we live in a society that values looks and actions over, well, pretty much everything? How do we push past our feelings of shame, self-doubt, and insecurity to realize in what and where our value really lies? Let's dig into this relevant topic on this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. With the way our culture values outward actions and appearances, it's no surprise that depression and insecurity run rampant in our world today. With social media pitting one gorgeous-looking, multi-generational, Walton-esque family photo against the solo studio shot of Weird Uncle Dave holding his pet chinchilla, insecurity can take hold and move people down some really dark paths. Not that there's anything wrong with pet chinchillas or uncles named Dave. The point is, insecurity is destructive. People turn to eating disorders, cutting, alcohol, promiscuous sex, drugs, all things that give pseudo-hope in the form of a mild distraction from who that person could have been and who they have become. And that's exactly what happened to the woman in this week's episode. Also, you'll want to stick around because later we're going to give the rest of you an opportunity to enter our sweepstakes drawing for a prize. No, it's not a cash prize, but it is a prize, and I think it's a prize you're really going to like if we draw your name, of course. But first, let's get to it, folks. Part one of the true story of Katie DePew. Hello? Rosa, I need help. Katie? <laughs> I'm as much out of money as I am luck. What's going on? Where do I start? The cigarette I'm smoking? I picked through a public ashtray to find a butt long enough to light. And I just found out I'm pregnant. What? Oh, Katie. Yep. You heard right. What does Chris say? Oh, I haven't told him yet. He's too busy selling dope to come home most nights. Well, what do you need? Help. Just help. I don't know what to do. Katie. I know. Here we are again. Look, I'd love to help you. You know I would. I just don't have time to be dealing with this. I have my own baby to think of, and you know. That's fine. What about your dad? Why don't you call him? <laughs> Last time we spoke, he said he struck a deal with the cops. If I'm seen within a mile of the house, I'll be picked up. That's rough. It is what it is. Well, it's late. I... I better be heading to bed. Thanks for being my friend, Rosa. Even if you couldn't help. Listen, if you get desperate, find a church. That's what they're there for. The woman in our story couldn't find where she fit in this world. Here's part one of Katie DePew's astounding true story and her journey home, right now on Unshackled. Rosa was my best friend, 
and seeing my list of friends growing ever shorter, I was lucky to have her. She was a middle-aged, underweight woman with a house, a job, a little boy, and sometimes present husband. She was almost always under the influence of methamphetamines. But surprisingly, she represented some form of stability and success to me in the sordid life I led. I grew up in the sunny, manicured suburbs of San Diego, California. My father was an educator, and my mother stayed home with us three kids. Any extracurricular activity you can think of, from sports to music to camps and plays, my parents had their pens out before the sign-up sheet was hung. I should have been the happy, bright-eyed girl seen in the home videos. Only, I don't ever recall being her. Instead, I remember feeling the darkness looming and how I wasn't good enough, and feared I'd be overtaken, which I was. Come on, Katie, please. No, that's all right. But we need one more for the kickball. You can play. It won't be fair. The teacher says we need... I want to play by myself. But why? We need... I said no. Fine. Just sit on that dumb swing. Katie, why don't you want to join the kids? I just don't like playing with them, that's all. Why? I don't want to mess up. Katie, come on. Last time I dropped a catch and everyone was mad. So what? And then I slipped running and didn't make it to base. I messed it all up. Katie, that's the game. Nobody's perfect and, and no one remembers mistakes. Everyone just wants to have fun playing. Well, that's not fun for me. Had it just been athletics I felt like a failure in, it would have been one thing. But my perfectionism stretched across all the extracurricular activities my parents signed me up for. So, more disappointment. My self-image was no different. As much as I hated my body, eating disorders promised me something in my life I had control over. And it made me yearn for more. Look who's back again. Yeah, back for some more Thinspiration. Well, Katie, you came to the right place. Did they get these mirrors at a fun house? No, we're just fat. That's not very thin-spiring, Melissa. (laughs) But true. Which is why girls like us hide out in the bathroom over lunch. Why? To avoid interventions. Interventions? Eating disorder interventions. Oh, right. They caught me twice last month. Yeah, every time old Grandma Bailey sees me in the lunchroom, she comes to check how much I ate. It's better not to call attention to ourselves. Exactly. Oh, and this helps too. Take a swig of this and tell me what you think. Wow, that's strong. What is it? Vodka. You like it? It's stronger than the stuff we had last week. For sure. Should we really be doing this during school? We should be in the lunchroom eating right now, too, so let's not get technical. (sighs) Yeah, I guess you're right. Of course I am. Here, have another drink. It wasn't long before alcohol led to drugs. When those failed to lessen my anxiety and feelings of failure, I tried cutting. I'd heard cutting in school. Didn't really know what it was until I read an article about it. First time I saw the definition, it was almost like the sentence smiled and winked at me. So I tried it. I felt brave with a blade in my hand. With every cut, I pushed away the scared little girl inside and made room for my new companion, Satan. I know, extreme. But I figured whatever God was out there expecting perfection, he wasn't going to get it from me. So I began to let Satan use me as an instrument of his power. When my parents hospitalized me, I attended group therapy and formed some fabulously toxic friendships. Everyone back in 10. Kristen, grab Macy. What are we doing? Quick, follow me. In here. This better be good. This storage room smells like, ugh, old school glue. (laughs) Oh, it's good, all right. Look what I snuck. (gasps) How'd you get glass through security? Taped it inside my hoodie. (gasps) Give me a piece. Hate is gonna hate, cut is gonna cut. (laughs) Oh, I've missed this. It's been weeks. Whoa, slow down, Kristen. (sighs) It's fine. Kristen, no, that's too deep. (gasps) Those gashes are huge. You're cutting through all that tissue. You gotta stop. Stop it, Kristen. I'm gonna be sick. What's going on in here? Oh, no. 
What have you done? Oh, nurse! Oh, nurse, call an ambulance. What was once a peaceful facility promoting health and healing now resembled a crime scene or a blood-spattered butcher shop. With blood gushing and wounds gaping, Kristen was hauled away. We never heard what happened to her. It should have been a turning point for me, but lost in the darkness as I was, I missed the turn. Uh, what's going on? Your father's taking your door off. What? You can't take my bedroom door. I need my privacy. I told you to stop taking my knives. And four are missing. Check the dishwasher. I have no doubt you swipe them. And as soon as this door comes off, everything in this room is getting hauled out. What? This is crazy. You can't take everything away. Oh, don't be so dramatic. You get to keep your mattress. <gasps> I want my stuff. We are doing everything we can to protect you from yourself, including barring the windows. You're turning my home into a prison. Maybe so. But you need help, honey. Mom was right about me taking the knives. Sometimes I used them for self-harm. Other times I used them for a blood sacrifice to demons or other kinds of witchcraft. I was obsessed with the occult and every type of counterculture. A deviant lifestyle promised freedom from the life of character and discipline that I lacked and loathed in others. My appearance, music, and activities mirrored evil, darkness, and rebellion. It was never enough to fill the hole in my heart. But I have to hand it to my parents. They were desperate enough to try anything. Katie, do you see this file? Is that all mine? Yes, over a hundred pages. I'm showing you this so you understand the depth of testing and information we gather to form the diagnosis. Diagnosis for what? Katie. You know you're struggling and not handling things well at all. And we're trying to help you. Now, from what we gathered, you have bipolar affective disorder, borderline personality tendencies emerging, depression, and anxiety. <laughs> Here, I was worried you'd tell me something bad. Katie, this is very serious. <sighs> Fine. I spoke with your parents, and it's best to start you on medication and therapy and see if we can find a balance that works. Will they go away eventually? My parents? Just kidding. <laughs> Mental health problems tend to be permanent conditions from what I've seen, but that's not to say they can't be managed. High school progressed, and with it, different drugs and therapists. The constant wondering and worrying, why am I like this? Why do I feel this way? Kept swarming my mind, growing louder and louder. I began to see that no one had the answer, and it was clearly up to me to hush the racket. What can I do for you? Uh, one of my tires is running low. That's an easy fix. Sorry, you caught me going on break. I'm in no hurry. You can... No, 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 it's no problem. I can do two things at once. Isn't it hard to work with smoke in your eyes? <laughs> I'd rather be smoking a bowl. A bowl of what? Anyone watching? Mmm, no. I have a bowl in each of my pockets. Is it good? You haven't lived till you tried this stuff. Is that an invitation? My shift ends in 30. I'm partying with some folks tonight. You want to join us? Sure. That's how I got started on crystal meth. It appealed to me as much as Chris did. Being older, very quiet, he played guitar and wore his hat backwards. He had a car and pockets full of drugs. I put on his hat, got in his car, and started down a road that hurled my life a hundred miles per hour in the wrong direction. All right, folks, we'll get back to Katie's story in just a moment, but first, I want to share a bit about how our ministry is able to bring hope to people all over the world. Unshackled is now in its 71st year of spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing. 
and the involvement of, well, supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, as you can hear, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we're able to share Unshackled worldwide. So, in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link, if there's one where you're listening, or visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org. That's unshackledpodcast.org, and then click the donate button. Or you can always write a check, Unshackled, we take checks. You mail that check to 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. We thank you for your partnership in our ministry. And now... Back to part one of the true story of Katie DePew. Chris. What? Not so loud. You're going to wake up everyone. So? I'm tired of tiptoeing around this filthy place. Look, Dave's nice enough to let us crash here. You're going to get us kicked out, and we have nowhere else to go. Okay, fine. Why are you up so late? I just got off the phone with Rosa. What'd she need? Nothing. I called her. Everything all right? All right? Chris, I haven't seen you in two days. I'm out of money. We don't have groceries in our car. The only thing we do have is out of gas and needs a new battery. Oh, I I was meaning to take care of that. We can't keep living like this. It's okay, honey. I got dough. I'll go around tomorrow and and get a battery and put some gas in it, and, and I'll pick up whatever you want at the store. No, we can't live like this anymore. What do you mean? I mean... This is no way to raise a baby. A a baby? But you mean... Yes, Chris. That's exactly what I mean. Okay, just calm down. Take a deep breath. If you only knew how many times I've tried that the last two days. I hate it here, too. Look, let's just pack up tomorrow and leave. And where are we going to go? My mom's. You want us to move in with your mother? Unless you have something against nice homes and gated communities on golf courses, it should work. We can't just go live with her. Why not? Because we're old enough to take care of ourselves. We're talking about her grandchild here. She'll do anything to help. Are you sure that's what you want? I'm positive. I'll call first thing in the morning. The hope we had for a better life tomorrow stretched into weeks and my mind buzzed with the decision I'd need to make. At this point, the baby was just a lump of tissue. That's what textbooks had always said, at least. I considered all the substances I'd put into my body since becoming pregnant and how risks for birth defects were very high. I was too young, had no money or job or stability. The father was not the kind of person I wanted in my life. It was scary thinking how I'd cope mentally or emotionally with parenthood, and the clinic was free and confidential, and no one would ever know. Planned Parentage, may I help you? Yes, I was in your clinic today, and I'm wondering about this medicine they gave me to take to to end the pregnancy. Okay. Can you tell me what's the actual cause of death? The medication will cause the placenta to separate from the uterus, which will end the oxygen flow to the brain of the fetus. How long until it... you know? A few minutes, give or take. Will it suffer? Listen, I gotta get that. Bottom line is, it's a few minutes, and then it's over, and then you can get on with your life. What they didn't tell me was that I would feel like I swallowed poison. A gruesome force wrenched my organs, working death inside my body as it killed my baby. I was alone and in excruciating pain while Chris had kicked back in the living room recliner watching pornography. I thought life couldn't get any lower, and then... Hope you don't mind long bus rides. It's better than hitching halfway across the country. Definitely drier with this weather. You didn't say how you came up with ticket money. Hmm, Promised enough glad tidings to my friends until they were interested in footing our fare. Chris, what if you don't have enough drugs? I don't want to start off on the wrong foot. Don't you worry. I got us covered. 
Where are we gonna stay when we get there? The floor of their fifth wheel camper. You're serious? For right now. Chris! L listen, baby, it's only temporary. Just until I can find us our own place. I just don't know. We're about to have the time of our lives, so liven up. It's gonna be fun. I tried to smile and not be such a drag. As the miles passed out the bus window, I thought of all the possibilities that were opening up before us. This was a new start, and I thought it'd be so much easier without me having to lug a baby around. It wasn't enjoyable trying to squeeze two more adults into an already cramped camper, but I'd stare at the tin ceiling above us, grateful we had a roof over our heads. Chris kept saying it was temporary, but the weeks slid into months before we knew it. Life seemed to be getting away from us in all sorts of ways. Police, open up. Everything's fine. No, it's not what your neighbors said. They don't know anything. Where's your boyfriend? Is he here? He just took off. How many times we've we been out here? I don't know. You know, one of these times, you're not going to be so lucky. Chris has been working on his anger issues. Have you looked in the mirror? No. Your neck's all red from him trying to strangle you, probably. And yet, <laughs> you're defending him. I'm not defending what he did. You're not putting a stop to it, either. We'll put another warrant out for his arrest. You don't need no, to... No, it's not your decision. The more drugs Chris shot up, the more desperate he became for the next hit. I quickly learned the only thing more dangerous than a drug addict searching for their next dose is the one who realizes they can't afford it. Chris's rage grew into a never-ending stream of violence where he saw me as no help to him and therefore I stood in his way. Thank God I still had friends that would help me. What? Where am I? County Hospital. What happened? You don't remember? No. What's this? Restraints. Why? To keep you safe. What happened? Well, reports are that you took a bottle of pills and tried to hang yourself. Your friends found you and brought you in. But not before you shattered a mirror and used the broken glass to threaten them. Somehow they got you here to the hospital where you tried to escape, half naked. Oh, dear. But you're safe now. I don't want to be here. I want to go home. Oh, you're not going anywhere. Yes, I am. You can't hold me against my will. Miss, you're in no shape to go anywhere. You're a hazard to yourself. And your family would not want to see you like this. Let me go. Let me out of here. The next day, I fed Summer her story to the doctor to get him to release me. First thing I did was call Chris to come pick me up. I thought this ordeal would have changed things, like maybe people would see and value me, or at least be concerned about my well-being now. But Chris and everyone we partied with didn't speak a word of it. Seeing that you don't matter to those who make up your world breaks something inside of you. I felt as if it didn't matter if I lived or died. <coughs> Katie, here, have some. I'm not feeling it. Come on, don't be such a prude. I need some air. I'm gonna walk home. Finally. What am I doing? What am I doing with my life? Huh. These swings are just like the ones from the old neighborhood. And feel like it too. God, if you're really there, help. Help me. I need help. Please, God. That was the night my life changed. Sitting on that dirty yellow swing Dragging my feet slowly across the ground, lost in the darkness engulfing me, I looked up at the moonlit sky and felt it, a glimmer of hope. Somehow I just knew God was out there and wasn't seeking vengeance on me. For the first time, I believed that he cared, and he didn't want me hurting and desperate for some insufficient love, because his love was enough and available to me. 
If only I could take it. So, let's face it. We often turn to insufficient love, whether that be from little things like people-pleasing to big things that take control of our lives like drugs or alcohol addiction. Yet in a world where there is darkness and depression, we have one that provides sufficient love, abundant love. He fills that empty space that Katie mentioned. When we view our identity through a biblical lens, we can see ourselves like Jesus sees us. And it's as simple as daily reminding ourselves who we are in Christ by reading His Word and ignoring the voice of the world that tells us we aren't handsome, talented, or good enough. You've heard it so many times, but the verse still rings beautifully true. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. 1 Samuel 16, 7. Now, if you've been listening to our Unshackled Audio Drama podcast, you know we've been answering questions from listeners. And this is one of our favorite things to do. We love giving you a sneak peek into what we do here and giving you a, well, a tour of our workspace. We do have a question today from uh, Randall in Tupelo, Mississippi, and his question is, is there any way to access past stories? Well, thank you, Randall, for reaching out. And thank you for partnering with us in our ministry. To answer your question, yes, you can access many of our old episodes for free on our website, unshackled.org. Just click the Listen tab at the top. You can find even more older episodes on our free Unshackled app as well. Just search for Unshackled in any of our major app stores. So if you've got a question, don't hesitate to reach out. We'd love to answer it as soon as possible right here on our audio drama podcast. It can be something you're curious about or just something you want to share with us. All you have to do is write us at podcast at unshackled.org or call and leave us a message at 312-281-1264. We would love to hear from you. Now, before we get to our sweepstakes drawing info, I just want to remind you to subscribe or like our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. You can even share it or tell a friend. Uh, We'd love for you to review, rate our podcast, and uh, don't forget to check out our other podcasts on this same platform, Unshackled Daily Devotionals and Unshackled In Person. We appreciate your input, folks, and uh, involvement in our ministry. And again, please consider supporting us so that we can freely offer quality Christian programming to the world. Okay, Here's the prize for our upcoming sweepstakes contest, a beautiful wooden scripture plaque. And I believe the scripture on this uh, particular plaque is Psalm 4610, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted in the earth. Folks, this is a gorgeous plaque, especially if you're looking for uh, daily inspiration from scripture. You will love this authentic and Um, very unique wooden plaque. The plaque has been sawn from a tree branch or a log uh, and cut in such a way to retain as much of the bark around the perimeter as possible. I didn't actually witness that happening, but I can assure you it did. It's been handcrafted around the natural character and the beauty of the wood that God created. So all you have to do to enter our unshackled audio drama podcast sweepstakes drawing, (gasps) that's a mouthful, is call 312-281-1264 or email podcast at unshackled.org and give us your name, phone number, and email. Your name, phone number, and email. The winner of this sweepstakes uh, drawing for this beautiful scripture plaque will be announced on July 26th. But the deadline for entry is July 21st. The deadline for entry, July 21st. And next time... (coughs) Katie, here, have some. I'm not feeling it. Come on, don't be such a prude. I need some air. I'm going to walk home. Finally. What am I doing? What am I doing with my life? Help me. I need help. Seeking an escape from inner turmoil. He's abusive to you. 
They're just little scraps. Katie, it's never okay for a man to put his hands on a woman. Katie Depew turned to all the world had to offer. What happened? Well, reports are that you took a bottle of pills and tried to hang yourself. And watched her life spiral out of control. My life is a mess, really. Um, I'm into a lot of drugs, and I just... You don't need to tell me. You need to take all these things and tell them to God. You mean pray? Don't miss the conclusion of her true story on the next Unshackled. Heard in the true story of Katie DePew Part 1 were Jennifer Dimmitt, Larissa Julianis, Jane Hahnemann, Shaz Campbell, and Michael Walner. Original music and audio engineer Don Bador. Sound effects Michael Walner. Recording engineer David Pierczynski. Script Kylie Hammond. That's it for this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory, your brother in Christ.